Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to chapter 3.1 of the video series. In chapter 3.0, we explore the concept of drift and diffusion current. In this video, which is chapter 3.1, we are going to introduce the famous forward and reverse bias, and also the important IV curve. And before I start, I'd like to thank Iris Grassroots Education for sponsoring this video. You can find written versions of my videos under the Design Spark website, links down in the description box. In these articles, I put down links to further reference materials for your further reading. These articles are the ones that I previously used before while I was learning about solar cells, so rest assured that they are good ones. So now, there's nothing else to do but to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. So, exactly how can we get current to flow in a PN junction? Well, this happens when we apply an external voltage to the PN junction and disrupt the equilibrium conditions. This is the so-called forward and reverse bias that we commonly hear about PN junctions. Here is what happens. The electric field at the depletion region forms an energy barrier that prevents further diffusions of holes and electrons. The higher the electric field, the higher the energy barrier. Now we know that the free carriers at the P side are mostly, if not all, holes, while the free carriers at the N side are electrons. These are called majority carriers, simply because they exist in majority. Now when you forward bias a PN junction, what you are basically doing is that you are connecting the positive side of a voltage source like a battery to the P side and the negative side to the N side. The positive side repels the holes at the P side, providing an extra force to diffuse the holes to the N side. The negative side repels the electrons at the N side providing an extra force to diffuse the electrons to the P side. As a result, the energy barrier decreases. The electric field cannot withstand the diffusion anymore. So a very small amount of electrons from the N side conduction band will diffuse to the P side conduction band. In addition, a tiny amount of holes from the P side valence band will diffuse to the N side valence band. These are called minority carriers, simply because they exist in minority compared to the majority carriers. The minority carrier electron at the P side is bound to recombine with the hole. This process is called recombination. Recombination always leads to current flow. And I'll tell you why. After recombination, there is some sort of charge imbalance at the P side and the P side would tend to kick out an electron into the anode, into the external circuit. This electron travels through the external circuit and eventually comes to the end side. Since there is one less electron at the end side due to the diffusion earlier, the electron would then re-enter into the conduction band. This cycle repeats, producing a current flow that travels from the P side to the end side. The same principle can be applied for the end side holes. This current is limited by the amount of minority carriers, and hence typical currents in PN junction diode occur within a few amps, depending on the degree of the forward bias. In reverse bias, the positive and negative terminals are switched. The negative side, now attached to the P side, attracts the holes. The positive side, now attached to the N side, attracts the electrons. This increases the electric field and energy barrier, causing the drift current to increase, overcoming the diffusion current and making either side to have no minority carriers. When there is no minority carriers, current can flow. And this is how 
a PN junction limits current to flow in only one direction. This property has a very useful application in solar cells, which we will learn in the upcoming chapters. Now, one last concept to understand in PN junctions is the IV curve. The IV curve is the bread and butter that every solar cell scientist must know how to read and interpret. The IV curve is simply a plot of current versus voltage in a diode. When I started learning about IV curves in diodes, I literally searched through hundreds of explanations. And so far, none can beat this YouTube explanation by all about electronics. So I really highly recommend that you watch it. Essentially, we have a forward bias portion of the graph where the voltage is greater than zero. At this forward bias portion, the more we forward bias the diode, which is by increasing the voltage, the higher the current. So the current and voltage behave somewhat proportionally, with a little bit of deviation. Now at the negative voltage side, which is the reverse bias, no matter how much we try to increase the voltage on the other direction, there is no current flow. But in reality, we have a small and almost negligible amount of current flow in the negative direction. We call that reverse saturation current. That's it guys for chapter 3.1. In this video, we explored the famous forward and reverse bias in a PN junction. We also learned how we can represent a PN junction via an IV curve. We are now left with one final hurdle before we start learning solar cells, and that is photons. That is coming up next in chapter 4. Take care and goodbye.